Okay, so at this point you should be over here at the IBM console, bluemix.net, and your static web extension, whatever you called your static website in Bluemix will be listed right here. Mine's called Try88. Now, you're not going to have this on your palette. You're going to have a completely blank palette. I'm just going to keep this here, so if you need to copy and paste any code, it's available here, but yours will be blank. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure I can output something. So I'm going to start with an input of timestamp. So if I go up here to input and drag over inject, it'll switch automatically over to timestamp. And then I'm just going to use a little debug output node to make sure that I'm outputting something. This is just an easy way to start. So I'll wire these two together. And when I click this timestamp here, I should get some output over here in the debug window. The first thing I need to do, and whenever I make any changes, I need to deploy it. So I'm going to hit deploy, and that's going to deploy any changes I've made to my Node Red flow. So hitting timestamp, you see I get this Unix display timestamp. And it's important to note this comes into this node under this message.payload. We're going to use that later. So you need to know that. So now that we've done that, that's really exciting, but let's move on and do something else more useful. Let's have another input node, and this one will be inputting on HTTP. So anytime we send an HTTP request to this website, it's going to hit this node. So let's again wire it to the same monitor. We can use a separate debug monitor here, but for this it doesn't matter. And I'm going to double click this. I want the get method, not the post method. And then I'm going to have the URL extension. That's also kind of the topic extension. So we can hit this HTTP mode, HTTP note mode externally. So let's just call this my topic, even though it's not technically a topic. Now in PC, I use it with this slash. I had one of my students say, hey, you can't use this slash. You have, when you do this, it has to be without the slash for Mac. I don't know if that's true, but if you're having a problem where the Git request isn't being ingested, then you may have to change that. So all I'm going to do is hit done here and again redeploy it. So when I hit get on here, I'm going to send it over here, but I don't really have a payload. So unlike timestamp, that's not going to work. But here's what I'm going to do in Arduino and I'm going to test it right now. And of course, you can test this in a more sophisticated client like Insomnia or Postman client. Very common for web developers. But I can also just test it from anywhere I'm at. So if I'm in Sri Lanka or Madagascar on vacation, I can open a web browser here and test it right from my web browser over the world. Because again, I have this static IP. It's not a locally hosted dynamic IP, so I can test it from anywhere. So I'm going to copy my web address here. You'll have your own unique extension right here. And I'm going to simply enter it over here. And then I'm going to add a parameterized URL query string. That's what we call it. So to do that, all I do is hit the topic name, my topic, and do a key value pair. So our key value pair is going to look like this. It's simply going to be, and this is standard form, and this is what Postman Client does if you're using that. Question mark, and I'll just say temp. You can call yours whatever you want for your... It's going to be sent out as JSON anyways, temperature equals 44. And then for your value of your key value pair, humidity equals, I'll just say humid equals 77. Who cares? Okay, so when I enter this, it may spin, but as long as it says the Git request hasn't failed, it's gone through. So again, if we go over here, we check in D, temperature, JSON format, temp equals 44, humidity equals 77. I can go ahead and change this. I'll say, hey, humidity equals 78 now. Things got a little bit more humid. Boom, there's our second package. So the reason to test that is just to make sure before we start messing around with uploading firmware to our wireless devices, we just know this works for what we have so far. So that's, we can leave this alone. Now we can move on to the next step. So for the next step, what I want to do, and I'll just let this spin here, it doesn't matter, I can close it out, is I want to add in a node for AWS IoT Core. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go over here to output and go to MQTT. So if remember for the IoT console where we're using these hosted device certificates, we want to use MQTT. We can connect through AWS IoT Core, other methods on port 443, 443 using certificates, and there's other ways to connect. But for what we're doing on port 8883 TLS 1.2 plus MQTT, we want to use this outgoing node. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new server. This is my old one. I'm just going to create a new server on this. It's fine. So create a new one. I'll call this uh, try 88 take two. Doesn't really matter what you call it. This is going to be my AWS endpoint. So make sure that this AWS endpoint is correct. So go over to AWS. And again, to get your endpoint, go to settings. And this is your endpoint, which won't change for your account. So make sure that's correct. I know mine is. I copied it over here. And it's just using it from a previous account. Put that here. This may be defaulted to port 1883, which is uh, MQTT. But AWS IoT can't use port 1883 because that's an open port generally used for MQTT without TLS. We need TLS. So that's why when we use TLS 1.2, we need port 8883. So change this to port 8883. You can keep this the same, keep this to chain. And now that's fine. We can update this here. And the other thing I have to do is add the topic. So for this topic, and this is our outgoing topic. So it could be the same as our incoming topic from Arduino or our other device. That can also match our outgoing topic. I'm just going to name it something different. I'm going to say my topic two. I'll just call it my topic two. Remember, over here is our incoming topic from our external devices. This is our external topic. So this is the one we're actually sending out to publishing from Node Red and subscribing to on AWS IoT Core. So that's important to remember. Also, I don't want that topic slash here unlike there. So don't leave this without a slash on it. Hit done for now on that. And then we got to make sure our certificates are installed on this device. So I'm going to open this up again. I didn't have to close it in the first place. And again, I'm going to click this over here at the server. And then I want to go to TLS configuration. Now I already uploaded my certificates. So you probably don't have yours uploaded because you haven't done this previously. But remember when we created those certificates and ascribed the policy, all-inclusive IoT policy to the certificates? These are the ones that we've already verified and tested that work. Upload these to Node Red here in the cloud. So there's your certificate private key. Again, you don't need the public key. And this is your X509 root certificate. This one is that 248-bit one that we decided to use. And you may or may not need to update that. You don't really. And everything looks good there. Update that. Okay, I can click that. That's all done. And make sure to hit deploy again. So I hit deploy. It says it's connected. We'll find out in a second. So the first thing I'll do is go over to AWS IoT. And let's subscribe to that outgoing topic. And again, not this topic. That's our incoming topic from our device or URL. Outgoing topic is my topic too. So without the slash. So I'm just going to say my topic two and then subscribe to that. I don't want to publish to that. Oh, I'm already subscribed. Let's do this over. Subscribe to that my topic two. Subscribe, not publish. I don't have a callback uh, to publish on that right now. Go back over here and let's test it out. So I can test it for that URL in a second. But for what I'm going to do now is it's going to send it a timestamp. Okay, it said it got sent. Let's go see that that actually happened. Sure enough, there's my timestamp on topic two. Now let's go ahead and hit this incoming Git node on my topic. I mean, uh, RESTful Git. So to do that, I'm just going to enter that query string. So going over here, I already entered it here. And again, I want it on this incoming topic. We previously did that with that little debug console. Now we're doing it live to AWS IoT Core. So again, my topic, and this is just the same one from last time. So hit enter, and then hopefully that got sent over. There it is on AWS IoT Core going through Node Red with our security credentials on Node Red. And just to make sure it works, I'll just change this to 88. It got more humid. Boom, boom, as soon as I open this up here. There it is, our latest reading there, 88. So we're good to go. Uh, let's do something else that's interesting. Let's go ahead and make this more like a realistic te text uh, JSON payload. So I'm going to copy what I have here, which I have one called temp function. And this just takes JavaScript. So what this does is it takes an incoming message and has an, adds a whole bunch of parameters to it, like temperature in Celsius, humidity, Humidity index, just a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to add an additional node just to show you how this works. 
So I'm going to add, it's called the function, and it's a double-ended node. It means incoming and outcoming. So I'll go ahead and hit this timestamp, drag it over here, and then I'm going to connect it to my outgoing MQTT topic. And what's cool about this is when I hit timestamp, it takes that Unix timestamp, which you've already seen. It hits my function and includes that time message as a message payload and then forwards that to my endpoint topic here. So I'm just going to copy this Java, JavaScript code I just copied. I'll call this uh, payload JSON, whatever you can call it, whatever you want. But see how it says return message? That's this incoming message forwarded to whatever node it's connected to. That's why it says return message. So let's just copy and paste that. And you can look what this JavaScript code does, but it's super, super simple. I'm just adding all these parameters, filling these variables with random values, adding it to the message payload, and then sending out the message payload to my endpoint. So when I hit this timestamp, it's going to add all this stuff in the JSON payload and send it out to my topic. So let's go ahead and check that out. So boom. All right, let's see if it worked. And indeed, oh, it only sent the timestamp. You know why? Because I forgot to deploy it. I keep forgetting that constantly, all the time. It's annoying. Do it again. Okay, now our timestamp here should have hit this payload and all of it got sent over to AWS IoT. And sure enough, there it is. And I'll provide this payload for you wherever you're watching this video. And uh, I can change the parameter values here by changing this JavaScript code and changing this value range, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit it a couple more times and you'll see that it hit over there, but that's not exciting. But what I can do too is I can send a parameterized value here and that'll also get forwarded. You don't have to do any of this. And we're going to show you the next lecture doing it in Arduino, which is a lot more significant. But I can hit it over here, too. And so I'll just hit that again, enter that. Okay, so yeah, this added in my temp humidity from sending those URL parameter string, query string, and then it added everything else. In the, and it created its own new JSON package. So you can play around with it. This node red has all kinds of functionality. But the main thing was that I wanted to show you that we're going to use in the next lecture is connecting this incoming HTTP request that we're going to take from our wireless device programmed in Arduino and sending it over to our outgoing MQTT topic. And why are we doing this? Again, when we do Mongoose and Xerneth, we don't need to do this because our certificates, our TLS 1.2 is going to be held on the device. But for this, for very constrained devices, or because maybe we want to add in extra parameters or play around with Node Red, we're going to use Node Red as an intermediary to accept our incoming JSON package. So, in the next lecture, we're going to go ahead and send data to this node, no fake packages, and then it's just going to forward it to AWS IoT Core. So, let's hit that in the next lecture.